Hey guys. Yeah, you can you definitely cannot tell, but I am in a different room. <laughs> uh the green screen does that, so. But uh yeah. We wanted to move my setup into uh into the bedroom because uh basically there's only two rooms in this apartment <laughs> and uh the other one is where we do everything so like cooking and like work and all those types of things and you know casting out watching tv all that good stuff but if i'm doing this it kind of it kind of uh <laughs> prevents my partner from making a lot of noise anyway so like we're like you know what we're gonna we actually um we actually lost power yesterday uh for about an hour eh, an hour or two something like that um because whenever there's any precipitation in <laughs> in our neck of the woods we seem to lose power and it was the first snowfall yesterday uh so that was cool that was fun that was very pretty and scenic except uh it was about like you know we got through most of the day it started at like 7 8 a.m and then it got to like around like four o'clock or something like that and the cower the power just completely cut like not even a brown out it was just gone so <laughs> we're like all right well we don't have anything else to do now it's not like we can do work so uh let's let's completely rearrange the apartment so so yeah that was fun <laughs> had to arrange a uh whatchamacallit how do you how do you, what do you call it like uh when you order something they bring it out to your car and they just start in your car instead of like uh instead of interacting with anybody it was like like in store not in store pickup but like our pickup i don't even know anyway uh so we got the only problem was we got like halfway through yeah <laughs> yeah dead drop yeah that's one way to receive uh ethernet cables um I realized that moving my computer into the other room was going to move me very, very far from the router. So I had to pick up a couple of 50 foot ethernet cables, uh, some cat six because, uh, the, 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 uh, the 20 foot ones that I had were not, <laughs> not going to cut it anymore. And so the 50 foot, like just barely reaches uh by like a couple of feet so we're like oh do we get the 50 foot or get the 100 foot i'm like we don't need 100 no way it's like it got real close to needing the 100 foot but i mean as the crow flies like if i just like threw the cable like from the router to here we would have had no problem but we're like we gotta make it look like relatively nice and just have it like hug the wall and that like used up so much footage <laughs> just like all right but uh, yeah, it's working. Uh, I, uh, you know, everything's mostly working, I think, uh, for the most part. So this is good. And I can be in a different room and not have to worry about noise or anything. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's cool. This is also very good for if I'm playing games uh, with my partner and we're both on like headsets and stuff like that. And uh, we used to get a lot of echo between us because we're like relatively close together. So now that won't be a problem either. So. <laughs> Everybody who plays with us uh, will not have the echo anymore, so it's great. <laughs> so, yeah. Halloween plans, no. Well, okay. So, okay. So, kind of. Um, I am going to be running my first uh, one shot as a DM or any kind of campaign at all uh, today um in a few hours actually um it's not a campaign it's more like um it's more one of those like open-ended like uh collaborative storytelling type things um but it's a it's a um a one shot called the skeletons um very spooky yes uh and um it's basically uh a collaborative storytelling thing where it focuses on this um these group of skeletons who are magically enchanted to forever protect um this uh catacomb basically this tomb and um the only time that they can you don't know anything about your skeletons you can pick like from a few skeletons in the beginning um and they all look different 
and they're on the only things on the character sheet is like the picture of the skeleton and which is just literally the skeleton has nothing else on it and it has uh like a bunch of questions uh that you're supposed to like try to answer about the skeleton's like past and stuff like that as you're playing and it also has uh one thing where it's just like um not only do you have to like you know have a skeleton but you also have the a big part of the story is like what happens in the catacombs what happens in the tombs and so it has like a, a prompt that's like hey this skeleton uh like put this like figure out what a magical artifact is and put it on like the western wall of the catacomb um and then the then like that's kind of like a story hook or whatever and then slowly you'll like you know things can get stolen out of the tomb things can get destroyed like etc 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 and you know it's just kind of like a it's a thing <laughs> so you're basically like the whole point is like filling out the backstory of these skeletons and then as things happen you you draw on your character sheet like and put in the details on the skeleton um special purpose uh system for the story um not really i mean there's no real system there's um there's very few die rolls at all the the point of it is like um it goes in these like um uh stages where you're you you you, you draw up everything you draw the initial catacomb and you say where your skeletons will stand and the only times your skeletons can act at all is when people come in to raid the tomb or come anybody comes into the tomb basically um and only then can your skeletons think for themselves, act, do anything, but they are compelled to defeat and destroy anything that comes into your, anything that comes into your catacomb, basically, uh, for better, or for worse. Um, and there's like, um, there's like a table of things that can come in to your catacomb, basically. And the whole point is to narrate like, um, how you drive them off. And while you're driving them off, you will have, um, you know, you kind of get in like to a, a story thing, you know, you can have flashbacks, you can, you know, talk with other people and allude to things that have been happening and all that kind of stuff in their past and like why your skeleton's there, what are they doing, how do they get cursed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and you like, what you're supposed to do is like, you're supposed to overcome anything that happens in the tomb basically until the very very end where you will eventually lose um but there's no like there's no damage dealing there's no like rolling for success um there's a lot of agency for the players um so they will succeed or fail as they as they please except um the per like the whole thing is uh like you're supposed to you know drive off these intruders um once you do that um your skeletons are uh kind of um trying to find words but they're compelled to go back to their their original stations and then stand there and then once that's done you roll on a table for a couple of things to happen usually it's something like uh something happens to the catacombs and something happens to one of the skeletons and then you have to like modify your character sheet or put it into the catacomb or you know tell the story of why that happened um and then you go on to like the next encounter and then the next encounter and all that kind of stuff and then eventually you like skip like centuries and like millennia and stuff like that and you get to encounter like more and more more powerful and powerful kind of uh intruders until eventually um like I think it's like you're supposed to have i think in total you're supposed to have like nine ish uh intruders but there's like a third stage of intruders where it's just like it's understood that you're you you might lose but that's up to the players if they want to lose or not um until like the very end where if it's like if you hit like the last one you're supposed to lose or and stuff like that so it can be run like it's i think it's supposed to be run like uh everyone takes turns as being the intruders and then their skeleton is just like standing there uh, immobilized for some reason um but uh since i'm the only one with the book and we're not all in the same place so we can't pass the book around to like uh, see what's going on and like in 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 like in this thing where they have the prompts and all that kind of stuff um I am just going to be, there's a variant that's just like, hey, one person can just be the dungeon master. And I'm like, all right, well, this works for me. <laughs> so we're using uh, Miro, which is uh, like an online, like, um, I, I guess, like a collaborative 
whiteboard for the most part and we're going to use that to draw on stuff and all that kind of stuff yeah it, it's, it's it'll be interesting um i've never i've never done anything like this before um in any way shape or form um and i don't know if my players have ever done more of like an open-ended collaborative storytelling thing as opposed to like a system that is like crunchier and has like a definite purpose where it's just like yeah go go slay the big bad evil genius like go do that like this is not that this is this is different um but what i want to do is eventually run a game of 10 candles which is kind of like this uh where the players will eventually lose uh but like no matter what happens but it's supposed to be like spooky and all that kind of thing uh, this is like a junior version of that where like there's even less systems involved uh so i wanted to start with this and then uh set up uh, a game of 10 candles which also since i can't use really physical candles uh especially not with my setup on my corkboard table which i am <laughs> which my computer rests on um I'm, i want to like set up some kind of like virtual candle setup thing and i want to like stream it to them and be all spooky and stuff like that and that would be fun but requires a little bit of work so yeah yeah um the single premise games are i think are really interesting because it allows people to do things that are a little bit weirder than they would normally do uh because they have like less attachment to having their care bad things like they don't want bad things happening to their character but in like the one-offs and stuff like that it's, it's perfectly fine because they're not going to feel like they just like lost a character with a compelling backstory and they will never get them back again like it, you're supposed to supposed to have fun and not really care too much about what happens like in terms of like being protective and letting people um grab a hold of the narration so or at least that's the goal <laughs> so we'll see how it goes um uh yeah i have i have no idea how this is gonna go because i don't know if anybody in my in my group has ever done anything where they have a lot of control over the narrative as a player, so. Ooh, add rooms to to a map each turn. That sounds cool. That It sounds like um, a tabletop version of Betrayal. Um, or not Betrayal. Yeah, Betrayal. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, haunted House on the the hill you know what i'm talking about I, I i can't remember what the actual name of it is um sure one of you knows what that is <laughs> hopefully yeah no that's that's totally it um yeah betrayal at house on the hill which has like a very long wordy name but everyone just calls it betrayal as far as i know um yeah that sounds fun yeah i've had a lot of fun with betrayal as well like i i could i can understand how that would be really fun as a more storytelling like uh vehicle as opposed to you know win lose hit people they take damage type stuff so that sounds really cool you'll have to uh you'll have to share that with me jason uh, i'm curious about that as well because i think that would be really fun also the reason why i want to start with skeletons is because there's literally zero prep <laughs> there's zero prep so i don't have to worry about like prepping enough or not prepping enough so that like it's understood that the narrative's just gonna go somewhere and I don't have to prep for it. So I'm not gonna feel bad if uh, things don't go the way that I'm like envisioning. So like we can just go with it and ha and like the tone of the story is just gonna be however people want it to be. So I think that's interesting and it puts a lot less stress on me. Uh, so <laughs> that's always good. Not that I wouldn't love to do a, a big old crunchy D&D &D campaign, but you know that that takes a lot of work and uh yeah time <laughs> time is time and yeah but anyway uh we're hitting up around our you know our usually our usual 15 minute intro chat uh so i am going to bring up the patch notes oh before that before i do that um i don't know if you guys can hear it but i think i have like a weird grounding issue right now uh with some of my components i'm getting a little bit of a a little bit of a a grindy digital distortion from my headphones right now if you guys can't hear that that's awesome uh but 
yeah it's 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 in my ears so after this is done i'm gonna need to yeah as long as it sounds okay that's fine um i think it's just me so but yeah i've got like components near each other that weren't near each other before and things plugged into things in certain ways with like digital and analog components in the same power strip and blah 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 blah, blah. so things are not the way they used to be so i probably messed something up but uh but yeah i think i think we're gonna invest in uh in a a, a power conditioner slash uh uninterruptible power supply because because yeah i think it's about time we've had so many uh we've seen we've had we've lost power so many times where the computers have not gracefully shut down <laughs> very ungracefully so i think i think it's about time that we get that and that'll that'll isolate everything and hopefully cut down on like weird crosstalk and grounding and whatever you want to call it so so yeah <laughs> anyway all right let's uh let's bring up these patch notes why not so uh this patch uh a little bit light on like uh big new stuff but it is uh an in-between patch here um so this is patch 413 and what we did was we kind of uh expounded upon expanded rather upon uh those playlists that we had set up before in that new page uh so i'll bring that up in a second but uh specifically we added a couple of new terrain playlists and also um within those playlists we have new new maps so New maps is good. Uh, new maps uh, shake things up, so that's always good. So I'm gonna I'm gonna switch on over uh, to the game real quick, uh, so y'all can uh, see what's going on with that. Um, just gonna get into the game real quick, and then we'll switch on over. All right, sweet. So I'm gonna go back and spectate. Yay, everything's working. Hooray. <laughs> so uh, we've got a couple more layouts here. Uh, so no longer do we only have default, plain, and insane. Uh, we also have uh, debris and restrictive here. Uh, so uh, debris has lots of falling debris, and that's usually uh, a fun thing to do uh, with some characters that can uh, you know, pull the other characters around and it, it really, it's an interesting way to play. And we thought it was like a fun little thing that we can just put on in its own little playlist. Um, down here with restrictive, um, this is a callback to some of the other uh, layouts that we had before, which blocked off an entire row or an entire column. Uh, so that's now available again uh, to be specifically selected here. Um, you know, eventually at some point we might get a little bit more granular of this. We might, uh, you know, have a little preview of exactly what are in these play uh, these playlists right here. Uh, but this is just like kind of a, a start uh, to building out um, this system. Uh, so as we start adding more and more uh, terrain features, that's when uh things will get really interesting uh we're cooking up a couple of additional terrain objects right now um which should be ready for the next patch um and i think that'll shake things up a lot without giving out giving too much away <laughs> so so yeah that's what we've got for today so um yeah i'm excited to uh you know design some additional uh, terrain layouts, some new battlefield layouts, and uh, every time we add more terrain, the more complex we can get with these, the more variation we get, we can get, and uh, that's uh, that's very exciting. Uh, so, anyway, yeah, so that's uh, that's our patch this week. Um, I'm excited to see what people do with all these. Um, we want to give people as many tools as we can to you know, mess around with the systems to, to lab, to practice all that good stuff. So, uh, these, uh, these layouts and all this kind of stuff, um, it's, uh, they're available, um, in, you know, in, in link battle, it's in, available in the hot seat. It's also available, uh, in the bot matches as well. So however, however you want to do this, um, it's available to you. So, but yeah. So that that that's what's in the patch this week.
If anybody has any questions, just let me know. Um, yeah, we're just gonna just gonna chill a little bit um, till our two o'clock. I know uh, some people got a lot of stuff going on uh, this week. Um, it's also starting to get into uh, holiday game release season, so there's also that. But yeah, a lot of exciting stuff going on right now. Uh, not to mention a couple of new game systems dropping. <laughs> so there's also that. Uh, ideas for other playlists in the future. Um, yeah, uh, some some fun stuff could be. Um, so for our tournaments, uh, when we run those, would love to see uh, an additional playlist specifically for the tournament itself. Um, so we can kind of theme those and uh, tie them to whatever we're doing and in order for people to access those because normally what we used to do was we used to go on the back end and basically anyone playing at that specific time was going to get whatever the tournament uh, battlefield layout playlist was. Um, now what we can do is that we don't have to like limit people to only that. Um, we can actually uh, we can we can have that as a playlist itself. And then we can say, hey, uh, when you're doing, when you're participating in this tournament, we're gonna do like, you know, this is gonna be a very like um, terrain object heavy tournament. And we made a specific playlist just for this. Go click on like the tournament playlist uh, and then go. Like that. that's like one of the immediate things that I'm thinking about. Um, that would be a cool playlist uh, for the future. Um, how would I like to see playlists broken down category wise? So, there could be some so some of the uh terrain objects introduce more or less rng and it might be interesting to uh, sp uh split them up a little bit that way so um what i mean by that is um so some of the some of the playlists uh or excuse me some of the terrain objects move around uh quasi randomly uh such as falling debris well i find debr uh, falling debris really really fun um, it's not always predictable in how it's going to behave. So, and that's not always symmetrical with how it affects players. So, um, you know, worst case scenario in the future, if like people don't appreciate falling debris as much, um, we can have it in more of like a, you know, a casual type playlist that has more RNG. Or if we have, you know, situations where people just want like um, very symmetrical effects on on the on the battlefield, um, that it's a little bit, um, you know, more deterministic. We can have stuff that has uh, like half cover, like that never moves uh, and it always behaves the same way. So that might be like the difference between more casual play and more like tournament legal stuff. Uh, so that could be an interesting thing. Uh, and then like the actual tournament playlist would be a subset of that, like tournament legal stuff, but you know, that, that could be something that we do. I don't think it's a hundred percent necessary right now with the number of terrain objects that we have, but you know, in the future, if we get more and more and more of these terrain objects, it might be useful to separate them out in different ways. So. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, I, I think that's, yeah, I, I, like, as of right now, that's what I'm thinking about in terms of how we can use, utilize these playlists, uh, in the best way, so. Ooh, hello. Oh, <laughs> whoa, it's scaring me. Let me turn on the, uh, the chat here. I need to figure out how to turn that on. Oh, that's not the right one. Oh, goodness. Yeah, I didn't know where to jump in there. I was just listening to your kind of explanation. <laughs> I totally agree that one of the big distinctions is yeah. terrain objects and playlists, which are kind of more RNG heavy versus yep. more RNG light, or I guess fairer. Yes, or, definitely. Or you could say. So I, that's kind of why we went with separating out separating out um, falling deeper into its own playlist now, because it's that's kind of the more RNG heavy yes. thing. So if you want a more casual game, or if you're playing with against somebody who where there's kind of a bigger skill differential than having yeah <laughs> j jumping on some crazy debris filled map can let you mess around more and yeah exactly you can even out that playing field sometimes so yeah yeah and i guess the other one is the restrictive layouts which again is like that 
creates a very specific style of play. Yep. Um, when we first introduced these terrain objects, I think the very first thing we added was just straight out block tiles, right? Yes, that's correct. Uh, and yeah, they were quite extreme, like blocking off an entire row or column. And we ultimately like pulled back from that because it was like really restrictive. And most of the the layouts in the default players now have a bit of restriction yeah. in the form of maybe some like cover or some like hazard tiles, but we don't really have many maps which are like super restricted. But you know, that's a valid style of play that people may want to do. Yeah, definitely. You know, may want to play around with, with team comps that work on that more restrictive layout. So yeah, because it's maybe not so palatable for it to come up like in the everyday rotation <laughs> because it's kind of extreme. I think it makes sense to kind of separate that out as well. Yeah, definitely. Because um, those types of playlists, or excuse me, those types of battlefields really allow certain characters to shine and some of them, some characters don't behave as uh, as well, or excuse me, don't, don't, don't perform as well as other characters. So um, it is a very extreme way of playing, but it can be very fun and a very different way of playing. Uh, yeah. So it's it's interesting uh, a lot of the times, but you don't want that to show up like a lot. Like you want one of those either either you know you're opting in to it, or it's going to show up once in a very long while. So people just you know it would be nice for them to have a a little bit of a say in that when how often that pops up. Yeah, I think another thing that might be good is having playlists which really spotlight any new like gameplay features yes yes so with the next patch you talked about we're going to add some new terrain objects we'll, we may as well add a playlist which exclusively has those or you know every map in the playlist has one or or both of the <laughs> of the new objects in it yeah definitely yeah it's kind of like a showcase kind of playlist for the most part like new patch feature playlist however we want to really call that um yeah and the other one is kind of I'd love to do the idea of like, you know, a weekly challenge or something like that. So kind of challenge playlist. Yep. As well. Yeah. So there's lots of things we can do. We kind of let people select the style of play that they're most interested in or let them lab on a certain kind of map or just play around with new stuff. Yeah, totally. Cool. So should we maybe try out a couple of these new... Maybe yeah, why not? Or Paul can jump into maybe one of the more restrictive maps or one of the kind of more debris heavy maps and we can see what those look like. Yeah, sure. Let's do that. <laughs> 